Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. Proving Kirchhoff's Law wrong has become a trend here and today we do one more video insisting that this law, which never had any experimental or theoretical proof, is false. Some argue that arbitrary cavities containing arbitrary radiation would be a violation of the second law of thermodynamics and therefore Kirchhoff's Law must be true. I have already addressed this in a prior paper, which is now the basis of this video. Let's do a thought experiment. We start with two cavities of the same size, each with walls surrounded by adiabatic boundaries so that no heat can enter them from their surroundings. These two cavities have the same temperature. The cavities are therefore in thermal equilibrium with one another. The first cavity is a perfect emitter constructed from idealized graphite with an emissivity of 1. As a perfect emitter, all of the energy in the first cavity is contained in the radiation field with none in the walls. The temperature of this system is uniquely characterized by the radiation field. This is just like the situation in Planck's classic textbook. Since all the energy is in the radiation field, you don't need to care about the nature of the walls. The second cavity is a perfect reflector made from idealized silver with an emissivity of zero. Therefore, it cannot produce any radiation at all. All of the energy remains confined in the electronic conduction bands of the walls. That energy defines the temperature for this system. Now we bring the two cavities together, drilling a small hole through both cavities and the adiabatic barrier. It looks like photons want to cross into the second cavity and that this transfer of energy could be used to do work. You would have built a perpetual motion machine of the second kind by doing work without a difference in temperature. But wait a minute. By making the hole between the cavities and destroying our adiabatic boundaries, we no longer have two systems. We have a single cavity with a central wall linking two sides of the same object. This is important if you remember the concept of microstates, which we covered in our presentation on the third law. In thermodynamics, any configuration of microstates is allowed. We can place all the photons in the combined system on the left and all the wall energy on the right. That is very unlikely, of course, but it is not forbidden. What the situation is telling us is that the emissivity of the new system is now 0.5. This is known as a gray body a cavity which has the same Wien's displacement temperature as a black body, but which contains less photons than a black body at every frequency. Remember in this example that we still don't get to have free energy flow to do work. Now in physics, we can break up any object into many parts in order to better understand the whole. As a result, we can break up the walls of each side of our system. Now simply imagine that if a photon moves from the perfectly emitting section into the perfectly reflecting section, an energetically proportional segment of the walls can be exchanged. No net exchange of energy has occurred. We are exchanging energy of a photon for the energy contained in the wall. This is allowed. No energy exchange occurred outside our system. No work was done by the system on its surroundings or on the system by the surroundings. The temperature does not change and we have not violated the second law. This argument demonstrates that no law of thermodynamics is violated when a perfectly reflecting cavity is devoid of radiation. Students are often taught that if one irradiates the opening of a perfectly reflecting cavity that it fills with black radiation as photons get trapped within it. The claim is not correct. A perfectly reflecting cavity cannot absorb light by definition. The perfectly reflecting cavity has no means of converting these photons into the radiation of the correct temperature. Therefore, if you pump photons, it will be setting up standing waves, not black body radiation. In addition, you will no longer have thermal equilibrium. The temperature of the perfectly reflecting cavity is determined by the walls. By filling it with photons, you no longer can claim to have the same temperature and thermal equilibrium. That is a violation of the zeroth law. The idea creates a non-equilibrium condition. The presence of black body radiation can never be demonstrated by insisting that radiation which was initially external to a cavity can become black body radiation simply by entering a cavity. 
Again, you get standing waves in this case, not black body radiation. That is a good thing. Otherwise, virtually all microwave technology would not function and early results obtained at ultra high field in MRI scanners would never have been acquired. So if Kirchhoff's law is wrong and cavities do not all contain black body radiation, then what do they contain? Well, if one is in thermal equilibrium, then the cavities will contain radiation which corresponds to the weighted average emissivity of their walls at every frequency. If the cavity is entirely made from a perfect emitter, it will contain black body radiation. If it is made from a perfect reflector, it will be devoid of all radiation. If it is made from an arbitrary material, then it will contain arbitrary radiation. It is only when arbitrary or perfectly reflecting cavities are driven away from thermal equilibrium that they might contain black body radiation. In any case, it is always true that if perfectly reflecting cavities contain radiation, they are not in thermal equilibrium as defined by the zeroth law. This is what we observe when standing waves are set up inside perfectly reflecting cavities, a daily occurrence in microwave technology and UHF MRI. I hope that you enjoyed this discussion of Kirchhoff's law in the context of the laws of thermodynamics. If you did, please leave a like. In addition, subscribe if you want to journey with me through space here at Sky Scholar. Comments are always welcome down below, and I'll see you soon on our next video.